Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Tawal Mehta and today we will understand how to do the model construction in Smart PLS. Once you have installed Smart PLS, an icon will appear on your desktop. You will have to just click on it. Now in the new features, the workspace, you will have to define the workspace first and therefore Choose your workspace. So, I have defined my workspace D drive and I have named it as Smart PLS. Once you define this uh, workspace, then you will be able to work in this workspace. After defining your workspace, you click on New Project and you can give any name. But for our purpose, I am giving the name here Demo. Create. Now it will ask me for importing the data file. In Smart PLS 4, you can import the SPSS file, the Excel file, which was not there in the earlier versions. In earlier versions, you can work only on CSV file, but this version is compatible to Excel file as well as the SPSS file. So I will import my data file here. I'll click on it, open. Now it will give me the information of the variables. So there are variables JS1, OC1, OC2. I want to keep it in a metric scale or I want to convert this scale OC3, OC4. I can change the scales from here. So I can keep it metric, ordinal or categorical. For our purpose, I am at present, I am keeping these things in metric only. It gives me the minimum and maximum. Now, what uh, treatment you want to give to the missing values? So, if you are having a missing values, you can apply the marker. It will give you the, uh, it will indicate where the missing values are located. Click import. And you can see now that it will give you the information of each and every variable js1 oc1 oc2 eb1 these are all the variables which are there in our data file it will also give me the correlation among these variables you can also zoom from here and you can copy to excel also and if you click on indicator correlations, it will show you the correlations. Now let us see what these variables are, JS1, JS2, JS3, what these variables are. So <clears throat> the job satisfaction is a construct which is captured by four variables, JS1, JS2, JS3 and JS4. JS1 is all things considered, I feel very satisfied when I think about my job. JS2, when you think about your job, how satisfied do you feel? JS3, how satisfied are you with your current job with HBAT? JS4, how satisfied are you with HBAT? That is a company, uh, a hypothetical company as an employer. So job satisfaction uh, is just like a football team, which we had discussed in my earlier videos. I, requ I request all my viewers to kindly refer my previous videos to understand the entire flow of this series which is represented by four team players. Similarly, job satisfaction is also a construct, a latent variable captured by four measured variables. Organizational commitment. OC1 is my work at HBAT gives me a sense of accomplishment. OC2, I am willing to put in a great deal of effort beyond that normally expected to help HBAT be successful. OC3, I have a sense of loyalty to HBAT. OC4, I am proud to tell others I work for HBAT. That is organizational commitment. Similarly, environmental perception is I am very comfortable with my physical work environment at HBAT. EP2, the place I work is in design to help me to do my job better. EP3, there are few obstructions to make less productive in my work workplace. EP4, what term best describes your work environment at HBAT? Co-workers, uh, 
the nomenclature here used is AC1. AC1, how happy are you with the work of your co-workers? AC2, how do you feel about your co-workers? AC3, how often do you think with your co-workers on your day off? AC4, generally how similar are your co-workers to you? And all this uh, constructs, they are deciding your staying intention in the company. So SI is a staying intention of an employee in a company. So SI1, I'm not actively searching for another job. SI2, I seldom look at the job listings on monster.com. SI3, I have no interest in searching for a job in the next year. SI4, how likely is that you will be working at HBAT one year from today? So now staying intention becomes the endogenous and all others are exogenous variables. So we consider that staying intention is going to be affected by the construct, which are organizational commitment and behavior with the co-workers, job ex expectations, which are captured with the help of measured variables. So we want to make a model. Now let us go again, go in smart PLS and press on back. Now you will have to create, uh, click on create the model and you can give the, uh, you can select from here PLS SAM. Again, I will give this file name as HBAT, a hypothetical data which is there. Click on save. So a canvas will appear. Now let us select the variables. That is the measured variables from left hand side. This is the canvas area where we have to work. I can select the variables one by one also, or I can do the multiple selections. Say for example, if I've selected JS1, then uh, I will name this as job satisfaction. When I'll click enter, the job satisfaction, which was construct, just try to imagine that football team, which is represented by JS1, one team here. Now I can drop JS2 in this, make sure that you drop this thing in the circle. Now this is possible or I can do the multiple selections also. How? Let us see. Click on JS1 and press the control button on your, on your, key, on your keyboard. So JS1, control, JS2, JS3, JS4, drag it and drop it. Now, the new feature which is there in Smart PLS is you don't have to name the variable separately. As soon as you will uh, drop the uh, measured variable in the canvas, it will ask for the construct. So I'll say that this all four statements are representing the job satisfaction. Enter. Okay. Then I will pick up OC1, OC2, OC3, OC4 and I will drag it and drop it. Again, it will ask me the name, organizational commit. Now the new feature which is added here is the alignment. You can see here, whenever I bring this one construct to the, near, uh, to the nearer to the second construct, it shows me the alignment, line alignment. Similarly here also, that this is a new feature which has been added. So organizational commitment. Now I want to include the environmental perception here. So EP1, EP2, EP3, EP4. And I will drag it and drop it. It will ask the name here, environmental perception. Then the behavior with the coworkers, AC1, AC2, AC3, AC4. So I'll drop co workers here. And the last one is the staying intention SI1, SI2, SI3, SI4. I'll drag it and drop it here. Staying intention. Now, if you feel that the canvas is a little bit bigger, or rather, I'm not able to accommodate all this construct in, in one canvas. The very uh, beautiful feature they have introduced is a zoom facility. You can just zoom it from here. And now 
you can reorient the constructs and you can make this staying intention as the dependent variable. Now, if you want to change the sides of the measured variable, what you can do is you can click here, right click and align to the align indicators to the right. This is possible, right? You can also do this thing. The same thing is also possible from here. Just press this and things are done. Now let us organize it properly. So whenever you get a straight line, it means that it's the alignment is there. Okay. All others, all other features remains the same. You can uh, connect from here now. So you'll have to click on the construct and you'll have to release the click on the staying intention. Similarly, here also from organizational commitment to staying intention, environmental perception to staying intention, co-worker to staying intention. As soon as any construct turns blue, it means that uh, we are ready for the analysis. Some new features which you can see here are, you can go here, and you can just click on the variables, the measured variables which you have used. It will be listed here. Unused, it will be listed here. All. You can also organize the things according to the alphabetical order. You can change the colors, the shapes, the borders, the text, and the color part from here. Moreover, you should always save. This is a save button. You can save your model from here. All these menus we will be discussing in the subsequent sessions. So I'll request all of you to kindly subscribe my channel so that you can get more and more videos on Smart PLS. And please don't forget to press the like button and follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Thank you.